Welcome back to Network Africa. Local media in Uganda is reporting the parliament is set to spend 600 million Ugandan shillings. So that's about $177,000 on medals to award 1,200 members of parliament who served during the period from 1962 to 2012. A plan to honor them was first presented by President Yuweri Museveni to mark the country's golden jubilee. According to a recent report, Uganda is marking its 50th year of independence from the UK, or it marked its 50th independence from the UK in 2012. Now, opposition leader Kisa Besiji and his wife Winnie Bianyima are on the list of those who will also be getting a medal if this pulls through. Ugandans, however, are quite, uh, um, well, they don't seem excited about what's going on. Uh, they said they don't like the lavish spending on medals and that the money instead should be spent in areas like health care. A medal announcement comes days after the state-owned New Vision newspaper reported that a parliament commission had allocated 50 million Ugandan shillings to cater for the funeral expenses of members of parliament. They are, after all, the most expensive parliament in the world. Security in Egypt, however, is a big concern. But one engineering student is doing more than just worry about his country and becoming part of the solution. Rimon Ashraf may not have any military trainings, but he sure knows how technology can help. Take a look. At the British University in Cairo, where he's enrolled, the 22-year-old is developing a new type of body armor that is both lightweight and relatively cheap to produce. He says the changing nature of warfare means security forces need new types of equipment to protect them. The idea came to me after seeing the frequent attacks on police officers and security personnel. The attacks are no longer the same. They don't use heavy weapons like the ones we see in war zones where armies battle with heavy weapons. This means a soldier has to wear body armor made of steel, titanium, ceramic, and other heavy materials in order to provide him with enough safety. This is no longer the case. The war on terror and cold wars are based on small, frequent operations performed by terrorists that use lightweight weapons, automatics, shrapnel, explosive devices, and such like. Providing the soldier with safety no longer requires traditional heavy armor. In traditional body armor, Steel, ceramic or metallic plates are used in layers to provide maximum protection. But using a combination of chemical additives and adhesive on polymide fabrics, Ashraf says he has reduced the weight of traditional body armor to less than half of its current weight. According to him, with minimal layering, his new product can provide protection from a 9mm pistol bullet traveling at a few hundred miles per second. It's a major step away from traditional layering techniques. Body armor that utilizes this material depends on one sequence, which is placing many layers above each other in order to stop the bullet. What I thought of was to create a composite material. We will use this material and enhance it using chemical additives, which will provide us with bulletproof armor, which weighs less, costs less, and is thinner than current models. I created the armor using a method that will guarantee very high efficiency without using too many layers which would otherwise increase the weight and cost to the manufacturer or those who use the armor. Ashraf and his team hope to develop the product further so that it will ultimately provide protection against automatic machine gun fire and rifles. Hundreds of soldiers and policemen have been killed in Egypt, mostly in northern Sinai, since mid-2013 when then-army chief Abdel Fattah al-Sisi ousted Islamic President Mohamed Mursi following mass protests. Islamic State Egyptian affiliate, which calls itself Sinai Province, mainly operates out of the northern Sinai Peninsula, which borders Israel, the Gaza Strip and the Suez Canal. Militants have also targeted security forces in central Cairo, its outskirts and elsewhere in the past few years. That's Network Africa today. Thank you for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani.